so nice to see you again. You too. Do you, uh, do you remember the first time that we met? Because I, I don't assume that you would, because you know everyone, but I did not know anyone famous when I met you. I met you uh, with um, that Stuart fellow, right? Exactly. Yes. It was early on, early on in his tenure at uh, The Daily Show. The sh Daily Show wasn't like The Daily Show yet. Yep. It, and and uh, somebody said, Eric Idle wants to meet you to me. And I went, what? <laughs> and I went backstage, and you were happy to see me, and I thought, something's right in my career. Exactly. If Eric Idle wants to meet me. I, I, so, I, I, uh, so where excited. did it all go wrong? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I left basic cable. By the way, I'm sorry you've lost the beard. Did you like the beard? Yeah, I love the beard because we're casting Spamalot for the movie. <laughs> and I thought... <laughs> you know, I, I... How long? I thought you... King... I thought King Arthur... You know, but now you've lost it. I thought maybe the Lady of the Lake. <laughs> I mean, her you... arm clad in the purest <laughs> shimmering samite. And you have the legs for it anyway, don't Thank you? you very much. Yeah. Um, you're, you're, you're <laughs> the author of a, a new book called Eric Idle, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, which <laughs> you call... You call a sort of biography. Yes. What's a sort of biography? Well, it's sort of true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty nice about people, which is... It's, not, it's what you can do when you get old. OK. You can afford to be what, nice. What, what's the part that's not true? The nice part? The nice part, really. I'm faking... <laughs> yeah. I, I'm faking sincerity, which is the hardest thing to do in show business, as you sure. know. Yeah. Because if you can fake that... You can fake everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What was the first time you... We, we've had John Cleese on a few times here. What's the first time you guys met? We met, actually, at Cambridge University in my second term. And I was doing a John Cleese sketch, which, I, which he uh, was doing for a college review. And it was about the BBC BC. It was about the news set in the biblical times. <laughs> and I played the, a weather forecaster. Um, I would go, you know, good even, here beginneth the weather forecast for the Holy Land. Uh, it's been a pretty rough week for the Holy Land. There's been uh, locusts, lice, <laughs> and now moving in from the south southeast, boils. <laughs> um, it's been a pretty bad time for Egypt. Uh, we are expecting next week frogs, uh, <laughs> followed by death of all the firstborn. <laughs> Sorry about that, Egypt. So, had you met Cleese at that point? Never met him. The first time I met him was after that, and I was doing his material. Um, well, you, you became... Every, all the Pythons became enormous celebrities. What, what was the most surreal moment for you when you went from a guy doing sketch comedy to a guy who is world famous? Well, it was weird. People wanted to meet us because they liked our show. So, for example, Carrie Fisher, I met her, and then she... Is that what this is, somebody? She stayed. Yes, Go here on. we are. Look, in my, this is our, my basement. Our basement in St John's Wood. And that's Harrison Ford. <laughs> uh, and that's Mark Hamill. And I'm... Uh, at the time, I was playing the Wookiee. <laughs> <laughs> and they, we, we, they were very miserable, because they were filming in Elstree, which is not quite the end of the world, uh, but you can see it from there. <laughs> and they were very, very depressed. So I said, I've got something that will cheer you up. And I bought this bottle of Bukka, which I bought back from filming in Tunisia. What is that? It's a, it's a Tunisian drink. It's 40% fig, 60% alcohol. <laughs> And a party broke out that night, and um, it was one of those strange evenings. All of the Rolling Stones came. <laughs> and I pretended this happened all the time. You know, hi, guys. Yeah. Uh, and they, they partied all night, and at 6 o'clock, the cars came to pick them up to go filming. And we went to bed, and the Stones went off to, you know, hang upside down in their caves. <laughs> and, um, and, and when I saw The Empire Strikes Back... As they come out of the aircraft, they're still drunk. <laughs> so, um... Well, in the, in the book, you talk, you talk about... You became, you became friends with Mick Jagger. You guys became quite fast friends, right? Yeah. Well, we're all the same sort of age, that group of people, you okay. know, so, yeah. And, and wh what's the most rock and roll thing you, you ever did or saw him do? with the Stones? Um, well, he actually took my wife and I uh, with Jerry Hall. We all went to the Monte Carlo Grand Prix in mm -hmm. Mon Monaco, which is a tiny little island. And it consumes tiny... the whole It country, consumes. Right? And so we drove uh, right into the centre of town. And I'm going, where are you going to park? Where are you going to park? He said, oh, 
parking. And we got outside... <laughs> we got outside the big building where it starts, and he said, one, two, three, out. <laughs> and we just walked out, and he said, rentals are good, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the police parked it for him, you know, it's good. It, <laughs> Well, the, the book title, uh, Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, of course, is uh, taken from, those you don't know, one of the best songs you ever wrote, which is the final song in Life of Brian, where <laughs> the people's front of Judea is all... The people's front of Judea has all been crucified by the Romans, and they're singing Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. This has become... It's taken on a life of its own. It's become an anthem of sorts. Yes, it was interesting because it's sort of a parody of a of a, of a war song, uh, and uh, you'd be after all, if you're being crucified, there's not much of the bright side of life left, <laughs> you know. That's uh, when it was being sung. But then in the war, the Falklands War, all the sailors were bombed on the Sheffield, and they sang it for three hours while they waited to be rescued by the rest of the navy, and uh, you know it became a sort of war song sung by real people in really dangerous situations. And now, it's the number one song sung in English funerals. <laughs> really? True. True story. I got rid like of... Like, as they're lowering the body down, uh, yeah. or...? Or whatever they're doing, into the flames. They sing Always Look on the Bright Side of Life. And they have done for ten years, and it knocks Sinatra off that roll. <laughs> what was Sinatra's song? My way. Oh, yeah. I did it my way. Yeah, exactly. Really? Well, yes. No, not I like very yours good. better. <laughs> what, what, what do you want sung at your funeral? Um, sit on my face. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grow the beard. And sing it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Eric Idle, lovely to see you again. <laughs> Always look on the bright side of life. A sort of biography is out tomorrow. Idol, everybody. We'll be right back with a performance by Love with Julia Michaels.